Introduced in peacetime, years before the outbreak of the Second Cylon War, the Colonial Viper Mark VII is the latest and most advanced iteration of the iconic Viper lineage, and the most sophisticated space superiority fighter ever developed in the Twelve Colonies. The fighter served as the mainstay strike craft of the pre-fall Colonial fleet, and was assigned to almost every installation and carrier vessel on active service. At a length of 9.8 meters and a wingspan of 5.6 meters, the Mark VII is slightly larger than the famous Mark II Vipers of the First Cylon War, but presents a sleeker and more precisely engineered space frame. The Mark VII is operated by a single pilot, supported by an advanced suite of avionics and Dradis systems. These systems were constantly updated with increasingly sophisticated navigation programs, the last of which was Dr. Gaius Baltar's CNP software, a system that was compromised by the Cylons and used to affect the invasion of the Twelve Colonies. All Mark VII Vipers that survived to fight in the Second Cylon War were purposefully downgraded to an older avionics package so as to prevent further Cylon infiltration. The Viper Mark VII carries three 30mm KEW autocannons, one more than most older Vipers, with the third being mounted along the ship's vertical axis at the centre of the aft stabiliser. These weapons use chemical propellant and magnetic acceleration to fire small calibre projectiles at an extremely fast rate and can be loaded either with conventional armour-piercing slugs or with fused high-explosive rounds. The three guns of the Mark VII are fixed on precise gimbals that permit a very small degree of targeting attenuation. This allows the fighter to harmonize its gun sights to a central point, enabling all three weapons to fire effectively on even the smallest targets at variable range. Like all Vipers, the Mark VII can operate with limited effectiveness within a planet's atmosphere, using its control surfaces and aerodynamic frame to maneuver in the manner of an aircraft. Naturally, this pales in comparison to the ship's performance in space, where it is able to use decoupled maneuvering to invert through 180 degrees or entirely change its trajectory in less than half a second. This incredible agility can place extreme stress on the pilot, but allows the ship to bring its guns to bear on any attacker almost instantaneously, making it extremely difficult for a hostile fighter to remain in the Viper's shadow. Mark VII's are also frequently loaded with a variety of missile weapons, fixed to ventral hardpoints beneath the fighter's wings. Mark VII ordnance loadouts most often consist of archer, aspect-seeking ship-to-ship missiles, but are sometimes replaced with or supplemented by unguided dumbfire missiles, or even tactical nuclear warheads for engaging large hostile vessels and installations. At the outbreak of the Second Cylon War, fewer than ten Mark VII Vipers escaped the Cyrenus system aboard the Battlestar Galactica, with the vessels assigned squadron of Mark VII's having previously been destroyed after falling victim to the compromised CNP program. Due to their limited availability, the fighters were almost exclusively used by flight leaders of captain rank or higher. This paradigm changed with the arrival of the Mercury-class Battlestar Pegasus, which not only carried hundreds of Mark VII's aboard, but also allowed the fleet to manufacture additional fighters using the Battlestar's foundry facilities. By the time of the Battle of New Caprica, a huge portion of the fleet's air wing was comprised of Mark VII offering the Colonials a lethal advantage in combat with the Cylons. Thank you for watching Space Doc. Please remember to like, subscribe and share for more science fiction spacecraft summaries. If you enjoy the channel, why not consider pledging your support on Patreon? For just $1 a month, you'll be able to access the Space Doc schedule to see what's coming up.